Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome you back to another episode of our Planet Zoo franchise mode Let's Play, where we're diving right back into Elite Zoo South to continue our adventures. That is exactly what I will call them, because that is exactly what they are. Our adventures, or perhaps misadventures in Australia. No, we're, we're, we're doing, we're doing alright, folks. I know at times it can seem extremely uh, stressful and uh, questionable, <laughs> to put it lightly, but we're fine. Uh, and the reason why I say we're fine is because I think I've finally sort of, yes, it's taken me, what, five, I guess six episodes for me to realize this, but I think I've finally got it into my head now, uh, the issue with my approach with Elite Zoo South so far. And I think many of y'all will agree, and in fact, some of y'all already pointed it out in the comments, and I've, I've, I've acknowledged them, and I've been like, yeah, you're absolutely right, but at the same time, when I sit down to play, uh, it all goes out the window. The reality is, folks... <laughs> Stating the obvious here, we are a young zoo, and the problem with my approach thus far has been I keep, I, I've maintained that same momentum from Elite Zoo North in, in, the, in the final days of Season 1. I've maintained that momentum coming into Season 2, and so I've got these like ideas that I really want to execute, and we can execute them but we can't execute them yet because I'm not, I don't have that financial momentum uh, to sustain that kind of construction and beautification and development and things like that. So what I really need to do, and I think, again, I think many of y'all will agree, what I really need to do is I need to take a step back, slow my roll a little bit, get a couple more animals in, which is what we're probably going to focus on today is at least get one more animal in, maybe two if we build a shared habitat, and even then I'll kind of consider my options. Uh, but get a couple more animals in, draw more guests in, get that flow of money, and then go back and start beautifying things. One thing that I, I keep forgetting and I keep needing to remind myself is that with Elite Zoo North, our first couple of enclosures were, you know, they were pretty, I will say, but they weren't entirely done up until many episodes later. And I think what's been happening to me with uh, Elite Zoo uh, South here is that I've, I'm just constantly pressuring myself to... Uh, go too far too too soon with everything, uh, and I think that's going to. <laughs> I'm I'm I've shot us in, in both feet already. I've run out of feet to shoot ourselves in. So hopefully, if we slow our roll now, uh, we'll recover. And it, it's not like it's too late or anything. We can definitely recover. But I just want to let you guys know uh, sort of what's going on in my head, It'll give you some insight as to my plan. So let's go ahead and hit play. We need time to move forward to obviously accumulate wealth, and hopefully that's what we'll be doing is accumulating wealth rather than uh, seeing it go away. And in the meanwhile, we will take a look at opportunities to, you know, like we have a pregnant roach over here, so we'll have some opportunity to make some money over there among our snakes as well. You know, hopefully we'll have another batch that we can sell pretty soon, so that'll give us some cash injections too. And in all honesty, I'm actually going to go ahead and delete this. 410 objects, and they are how much again? Let me, I, just, I, I just need to check. I just need to remind myself. If I go into construction and I go into, I think plank is what they're classified under these are yeah 10 bucks a piece man that's four thousand dollars right there that's ridiculous i i need to, i'm gonna actually get rid of this structure not only because i uh, it's an eyesore right now and it's in complete state and i think we'll all agree uh, but also because i'll get some money back and yes i won't get all of the money back and so technically it is a waste totally but i think the cash injection will be nice to have for today's time lapse because there will be a time lapse i think it'll be around halfway through today's i know some of you are probably yelling at me for doing what I just did, but trust me, it's it's the right choice for uh, my approach, I'm going to go ahead and say. And plus, hey, now we're going to get some umbrella sales, right? Uh, but yeah, it, it was a bit of an eyesore and it's incomplete state. Many of you even pointed out that you're not really happy with how it looks and it doesn't look like it fits. And I agree, in its current state, it does not look like it fits the uh, environment and the aesthetic. Uh, but when it's done, the, the vision I have for it, when it's done, it'll I think it'll work really nicely. So let's just get rid of that. With the money we got from that, we'll be able to actually invest in the expansion over here, which is really nice. Uh, and we can also invest perhaps in some coverings for our shops. Uh, what I need to do first and foremost the next time the conversation about beautification comes up is I need to beautify these stores because it does make a big difference in guest happiness. Don't have enough money to visit Crocopedia. Well, there's an ATM right over here. So why are you going home? Please. Um... The ATMs are free, right? We we made them free. Yes, we did. Uh, but yeah, so, sorry. What I was getting at was, when these spaces are prettier, uh, guests become happier. 
So I need to prioritize that when it comes to beautification. It is beautification that it has a very direct and immediate response rather than, um, you know, area beautification that can take a little bit longer to actually make that difference that I needed to make. Now, in all seriousness, you know, with jokes aside, the umbrella sales should help us a little bit. Uh, financially, we'll be, I, I think we'll be doing better. I, I do think I might want to fire somebody. It's been pointed out that even though the uh, salaries are listed per month, it's probably actually per annum. Like, it's probably actually an annual salary. Is 325 times 12 is 3,600, like we're rounding, but that's 3,600. If you look at our finances, our um, staff wages... Does that math that up, actually? Hmm, I don't know, 20k. We're paying 20k, roughly. Yeah, that, 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 that doesn't make sense. Just this one keeper alone making 2,000 a month, in 10 months they would have taken that entire 20k. So, yeah. If we're gonna fire anybody, we should fire a, a keeper or something. Or, or this level 2 security guard. Low workloads. What I can probably do is, honestly... Ugh, you've been with us for so long. I hate firing people. I hate it. It makes me feel so bad. I know they're just pixel people, but it makes me feel so bad. Um, so I'm gonna try and hold off on that. Uh, I'll give it. I'll give it a little bit of time. Uh, but yeah. So I think with uh, the roach babies we're getting, selling them off, we'll be able to invest in an expansion over here. And I've actually evolved the plans for South America as well. Let me touch on that a little bit too, because there, there was a lot of conversation. I love this. I love the level of discussion that happens in the comments. This is why, folks, I say all the time, if you're enjoying the series, make sure you leave a like and a comment down below. I look at the numbers for those quick reads on what people are interested in. But beyond that, if you leave a comment, I do read all of the comments because uh, for me, it's a very fun part of the experience, that engagement, that uh, uh, community feeling, I suppose, with with the approach on, on things. It... it, it it's huge for me. I really enjoy it. And, uh, and so I want to stress that um, I do read them all and they do directly impact what we do uh, in our zoos. And it rhymes, so it must be true. I do love that that rhymed as well. All right, so the reason why I just went through all the frogs and stuff is because it was pointed out, not just in the comments, but also in our Discord. Link to that is in the description. If you're not already in the Discord, you should join us for, for these conversations. Uh, but it was pointed out that Quite a few of these frogs, as you have now seen, actually do exist in the Southern Hemisphere or right on the cusp of. So we can actually build a decent um, size. Like I've got not the Goliath frog, sorry. The Golden Poison frog, the Lehman's Poison frog, and the Red-Eyed Tree frog can all be used to make a bit of a um, sort of collected space in the South America region. And I want to also touch on the fact that the red-eyed tree frog... Okay, so just to be clear, Elite Zoo South and the South America section over here, the idea was to stick with the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, so the Southern Hemisphere is roughly along this line over here, roughly around here, and anything below that we were looking to include in, uh, in Elite Zoo South. So for example, the orangutan might make another appearance, right? Um, maybe. So that's why I was ignoring the red-eyed tree frog because it is above that line. However, I have been thinking about blurring that line just a little bit because otherwise we're going to have pretty barren uh, situations with Elite Zoo South. So I think this is one of those cases where just like with Elite Zoo North, we included the saltwater crocodile, which is obviously from the southern hemisphere. We're going to blur the line a little bit and allow the red-eyed tree frog to exist in, uh, in our South America section. So what we're looking at over here, again, on the topic of the evolving plans, we're looking at uh, building a space for our... Sorry, it'll be the other way around. Down over here, building a space for our Anteater and Baird's Tapir, which is probably what we're tackling today, is my thinking. Uh, a space for the um, Capuchin Monkeys, which I've got some grand plans for. Uh, oh, hey. Little buddy over here. Sorry, I didn't. Yeah, there we go. Look at this little buddy over here. I'm so pleased. Not a care in the world. He doesn't care about the financial situation of the zoo. He's just walking around. Great strut. She's just walking around. Great strut. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> back on back on topic. Uh, yeah, I've got some pretty big plans based on suggestions, and uh, I, I want to make sure I have the space to expand 
this area. We want to make sure the capuchin monkeys have a decent bit of play space and that guests are able to, of course, get into the space as well. And over here, we'll want to do the jaguars and perhaps a reptile um, enclosed space, like a, like a structure, like a built area. So big plans, slight modifications, um, but that's what I'm thinking. I was also thinking about doing the exhibits over here. But I've 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 changed my plan there. And again, when the, when the time lapse actually begins, my plan might evolve even further because that's just kind of how I work. Is uh, I play it by ear. I go by what feels right when it feels right. But I will of course explain what's going on when we get to that time lapse, and uh, and hopefully it'll all come together nicely. I'm pretty excited. I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty excited. I'm not worried about our financial situation. We're already looking pretty good. No crime for three months. Excellent. Another 2,500 to bring in. Surely the babies have come by now. Let's take a quick look. Nope, not yet. Soon, hopefully. Expecting offspring. Uh, actually, on the topic of... Things I need to check. Based on comments. Let's go ahead and tuck you in. There we go. Beautiful. That was pointed out to me. So thank you for that. Um, where was I? Right, so... We're gonna head there shortly, folks. I mean, money's already looking pretty good. Of course, what was it? Um... 2k, I think it was, roughly, came from deleting the construct over here. But even without that, money's looking good, right? Salaries in check. Donations are probably looking pretty good as well. If we take a look over here, yeah, donations are looking good. It's only May. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. This is the most I've cared about money. We are playing on hard mode as well, right? Let's not forget. We are playing on hard mode as well. Um, and that's another thing I just have to kind of adapt to. Increase reputation to three stars. Adding more animals will help there. It'll help with education rating and stuff as well. But uh, the marketing is an easy thing to do, but that, that expense is something I don't want to take on right now. Marketing or a loan. I saw many folks suggest I just take on a loan. I just don't think that's the right uh, call. But we will be getting a cash injection from this when we get the new habitat done as well. So that's good. When our happiness just dropped. Let's take a quick peek over here. Let's take a quick peek over here. We're, we're just about ready, actually, to dive into the time lapse. To do what I'm going to do, 10k is enough, unlike last session where it wasn't. Someone stole money. Not a lot to do. Okay, well, that we're, we're, we're trying to tackle that not a lot to do issue. But one thing I do need to do as well is get some more security cameras down. Been a little lax about this, if I'm completely honest. I guess it is a bigger deal in... Um, in... Uh, in harder difficulties. So let's go ahead and get more cameras down. Can't be so relaxed. Let's go ahead and spy on people's ATM pins and things like that, I suppose. Pop you down over here. Right? They're not too expensive. 150 a piece. They're not too expensive. There's the operating cost to worry about as well, right? There's the operating cost to worry about as well. Let's hide one in the trees over here. Right by these stores. Are you snapping to the ground or are you, what are you? You're... Okay, there we go. I was like, this doesn't look right. There we go. Pop you in over here. Again, I like things to blend in nicely, right? I like things to feel like they kind of belong. This one is a little out there, maybe. Go ahead and move you down a little bit. And uh, to those of you who are wondering about the density of the trees and stuff and how I'm, like, overdoing it a little bit, don't worry. We will be making adjustments down the line. Right now, again, we're playing the game, right? It's not sandbox mode. I'm not free to do whatever I want whenever I want. Uh, which is part of what I enjoy, uh, but it does come with its sort of limitations and its uh, requirements as well, such as uh, bending the rules of the environment, if you will, temporarily, until we get uh, get things where they need to be, so to speak, um, such as having more trees than maybe would make sense in the region. Let's go ahead and get another camera down over here. Security guard getting their jobs done. Good stuff. Let's go ahead and get you go over here is not a bad idea. And I want to make sure, obviously, that we're within power as well. Yep, yeah, excellent. Go ahead and pop you down. That's not what I meant. Get you like so. Beautiful. Actually, works decently nicely, I would say. That's good coverage. That's much better coverage, I would say. Yeah, we're basically... Cameras only, please. This area is blank, but we'll get coverage there soon. I suppose I should put some coverage down over here, actually, for when the security guard's not here. Go ahead and rotate you around. Yeah, I didn't realize that uh, pockets being picked was going to be such a common occurrence, I guess, on this harder difficulty. 
that's gotta be it. I didn't. It wasn't that much of a problem in our old zoo, even when we didn't have as much uh, security. What's up over here? Animals hungry? Sorry. I'm there. I do wonder if there's a way to make access to the keeper hut easier. Just to make it faster. I could add another one in over here. That is something I've been thinking about. I could add another one in over here. That would be a little bit quicker to serve these guys and these guys. Yeah, I might do that. I might put a um, keeper hut as well as a staff room so that these guys don't have to go so far to take a break. And then this kind of becomes for everybody that works in this region instead. Something to think about. Something to think about for sure. Let's speed time up a little bit. Continue to see the trend for our wealth and also hopefully get the opportunity to sell some of these animals off and then dive into our time lapse. I'm excited for this one. I'm excited to add a couple more animals because, again, it'll give us that momentum we need, right? That's the that's the key word today is momentum. Uh, we're trying to build that up and then hopefully that'll, that'll send us into a position where we're able to charge more for tickets, people coming in, and uh, get more donations. And if we actually take a look, actually, I used to do this a lot at the beginning of Elite Zoo North, and I want to start doing it more with Elite Zoo South as well. If we take a look at the Anteater, right? Um, oh, actually, before I even do that, I want to touch on something here. It was pointed out to me that Columbia is listed as one of the regions that the Red-Eyed Tree Frog is in, so even if we didn't want to blur the line of North and Southern Hemisphere, uh, we're good. And again, thank you all in the comments and in Discord for pointing that out to me and giving me reassurances, basically. Uh, but yeah, sorry. So what I want to do is I want to take a look at the giant ant eater, right? Oh, what are we looking at here? It's a vulnerable animal, so that's good for us. If you look at the tapir, I believe the tapir is also, yeah, it's endangered, right? So that's going to help our conservation rating if we're helping. My understanding is when we help preserve these kinds of animals, it helps our conservation rating. So both of these animals are, um, are good options, I would say. Uh, in terms of space requirements, 660 meters square. All right. Let me take a quick look over here for a comparison. 660 meters squared. How much do you have right now? This is 3,000. So, well, this is 4,000. But let's let's say 3,000 because an easy math, a sixth, no, a fifth of this space is what we need for the anteater, for one anteater. So, I feel like this is enough room for the anteater. It's good. Um, so, that's that. So, yeah. Vulnerable, which is going to be, I think, good for us. Now, I've been told they're not the highest appeal animal, but I'm hoping their vulnerability will help us in other ways. Solitary and live alone, with the exception of a mother and her young. So, one to two is what we're going to do. You Guests can enter, but we're not going to do that. And I know I keep pointing I keep pointing out the habitat's going to be in the wrong spot, but <laughs> I remember where it's supposed to be. I just keep uh, pointing in the wrong direction. Reproduction is easy, so that's promising. Babies coming through and stuff like that, right? That's promising, that's promising. And of course, we don't really have any of the other information apart from this that we can act on. Yeah, I think they're, I think the anteater is worth doing. And I think the tapir is worth doing as well. I don't want to overdo it all at once. We want to be careful about, um, you know, feeding costs and things like that as well. Uh, but I do think it's, it's, it's the right call. Get them down over here, build our new exhibits as well, which we might get to today. Put down the other exhibit animals. And, uh, and that would allow us to make a lot of money by doing this, right? Send these guys to the Trade Center, Exhibit Trading, and Select All, Quick Trade. 700 bucks. Not a lot. It's not nothing. Snakes make us more money, and those frogs and all will make us a decent bit of money, too. In fact, let's go ahead and get you guys in the Trade Center. And let's go ahead and sell you right, bat, right away. Cool. Right off the bat and right away, we're blending there for me. Again, money is okay. Not liking this. A couple animals I think will make the difference we need. Again, I can fire somebody as well if necessary. If necessary. And construction costs. Hmm. No, I don't wanna I don't wanna suggest that that's exactly what did it. Alright, we're just gonna wait for the sun to rise and the rain to go away, and then we'll dive into the time lapse and uh, get some new animals in. I'm really I'm 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 I can't wait until uh, we're going full speed ahead. And again, I hope y'all understand the reason for caution, and I hope y'all, you know, are uh, 
are are excited with me for what's to come. Uh, it's we're not going to slow down our progress. We're just going to change what we uh, make progress on for now. Um, not for very long, I don't think, though. Not for very long, I don't think. Go ahead and say hello. No reason not to, obviously. Workshop I'll get later on. I don't need one right now. Done basically all the research that needs to be done in the workshop, I've done already. Uh, I saw I brought up like, oh, you need the workshop to research uh, construction pieces. I've already done all that research at Elite Zoo North, and that carries over between zoos. And the other thing I want to touch on is in a desperate scenario, if things really come to that, what we can always do is, from our animal storage, again, just a reminder, we've got some really high quality animals that we can always, if the game would let me click on them, quick trade. And some of them make us a lot of money, right? So we do have that option. In a worst case scenario, I don't want to use that as our first option. But if we get desperate, there is, there is money in these animals, right? Again, hopefully it doesn't come to it though. Inspector has arrived. Who are you looking at? Udiwati. Let's go ahead and check your situation here. Food enrichment, we could add a little bit. Let me actually check your meal quality. Because that might be costing us as well, right? Grade 3. Let's go ahead and drop it down to grade 1. We're, we're, too, we're too early in the game to be giving everybody grade 3 food. And it sucks to drop their meal quality, especially with an inspector right over here. But well, let's be honest, not just with ourselves, but also with the uh, inspector, right? Drop them down to grade one food quality. They'll be okay. We'll, 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 we'll bring it back up later. And that'll help us make more money as well. I'm not sure why they're up at grade three. I don't remember setting them up to grade three. I'll be completely honest. Maybe that's the default because they already have access to it. But um, thank you for pointing that out again in the comments. Uh, it really helps all those little expenses. They really do add up. Now, if I wanted to add another food enrichment because they are getting bored over here. I could add the restraint feeder. You know, it's actually a pretty cool toy. I'm surprised I didn't put it down sooner. Drop you down over here. Good view, right? Now let's put you down over here. I'm going to need to smooth the train a little bit, I think. And to those of you wondering um, or asking for me to make a um, island, because I, I have received that request a fair bit, like to have islands that are... Um, Crocs can rest on uh, in the middle of the water over here. The reason why I'm not making any islands or anything like that is because uh, keepers can't reach them. And if keepers can't reach them, they will get dirty. And if they get dirty, uh, they're, you know, just bad for animal health and people get upset and things like that as well. So uh, just want to be careful about that. Hence the lack of islands. We will beautify the space though. But again, that's something that we have to consider for later. That meal quality is going to suffer a little bit, but overall, these guys are happy, it looks like. Good stuff. Good stuff. And back over here, actually, I should do that check on the llamas as well. And not just that, but it's been pointed out that one of my education boards... Hmm. Strange. Normally, if an education board is without power, it turns red. What I think might have happened is one of my... Um, one of my power generators might have been uh, needing some repairs. Is when when they need repairs, their radius shrinks a little bit. So that might be what happened. Oh, this camera needs to be moved in, actually. And tuck you in there. Rotate you so you actually fit. Yeah, so what might have happened is like one of my um, generators might have run out of power. Or might have uh, needed repairs, which is why the radius shrunk. Which is why one of my education boards had turned off. Many of y'all pointed it out, but it looks like we're all good now. Everything is blue. Blue is good. Red is dead. So we're fine. Cool. Um, sun is up. Money is looking all right. It is year 19. Is it time to get ourselves... Actually, one, one more thing I want to check over here. Llama Lane, who are you going to see? Interrupted my own thought process when I... Um, when my split mind took over. Where are you? Oh, you. I was like, who are you looking for? Oh my god, they're so cute. So, food enrichment is okay. I'd like to make that up to 100, but we're fine right now. Meal quality again. It's a temporary struggle, but it is a necessary struggle. Uh, the needs of the many, right? Outweighing the needs of the one animal. But, uh, last year we made money. Good. Last year we made money. I can't remember if it was last year or two years ago that we... 
sold stuff. Make money. Donations are on the way up as well. Alright, good. That feels promising. We've accomplished another task as well, so let's go ahead and claim that three-star education reward. Thank you very much. And folks, sun is basically right above our heads. I don't think I could ask for a better time to uh, kick off our time lapse, bring in some new animals, and in fact, before we dive into it, now nah, you know what? Maybe we just dive into it. Things are looking okay over here. February. It's not super busy. 433. Oh, you know what? I keep forgetting to change this setting. So, I'm just going to do that before I forget. Game, guest settings, maximum guests. Yeah, no, we're not limited or anything over here. It's just limited in, in the old zoo. I guess it doesn't carry over. Uh, all right. Enough done. Enough said. Almost 13k. I think that'll be enough for us. And if it's not, <laughs> we'll find out <laughs> together. Who doesn't like a good roller coaster ride, right? Folks, it's time lapse time. All right, folks, time lapse time indeed. And honestly, I am really quite pleased with how this time lapse goes. Uh, on the fourth right, it is not a time lapse where the enclosure is brought to 100% completion. I don't think that was ever really the plan, or I don't think that was ever really realistic, and I don't think it would be a smart thing to do either, if I'm completely honest. It's not the result of timing or scale or anything like that, but just the result of our financial situation. I genuinely believe that if we just slow things down by a notch and pace ourselves, we'll be able to get to full speed sooner rather than constantly sort of butting up against this financial wall and having to slow down every couple of episodes. I feel like if we, again, if we pace ourselves, we're going to get to full speed by about episode 10, maybe. Whereas if we don't pace ourselves, it'll be episode 30 and we'll still be like, oh, why is the money gone? <laughs> so uh, hopefully this works out. Now, with that said, uh, the enclosure still gets a lot of work done. We still make a lot of progress. Uh, we get the structure down, we get the overall aesthetic in place, we get the overall theme going. So it, for all intents and purposes, it's I would say it's about 80% uh, there or so, maybe 75, 80%. We just have to take it that last notch that uh, you know brings it up to elite status, if you will. But that is something that, yeah, we're going to save for, uh, for when we have enough money. Now, again, this is going to be a shared enclosure between the Baird's Tapir and the Giant Anteater. Uh, and because the Baird's Tapir is involved, it is not going to be a walkthrough enclosure. Just want to touch on that a bit more as well. We are looking to bring the Baird's Tapir down here from Elite Zoo North. Hopefully we'll have, I, th I think we have some decent quality animals from uh, uh, from Elite Zoo North that we can bring down over here as far as the Baird's Tapir is concerned. And uh, that'll make another connection just like we did with the Saltwater Crocodiles between the two zoos in the franchise. Now, because we're bringing the Baird's Tapir in, that means we can't do a walkthrough enclosure. So we're doing the next best thing, which is sort of a 360 degree viewing platform. This worked tremendously for us at Elite Zoo North with the camel enclosure. Some of y'all will remember or know what I'm talking about. Uh, we were just raking in the money with that. And I'm really hoping to recreate that success with this 360 viewing point. Because basically, from that platform, which we will eventually build a cover for, but we don't do that today. Just, again, money and all that. Uh, but from that viewing platform, you'll be very close to where these animals will be sleeping, eating, doing all other bodily functions that... Are required of an animal or any living being um so hopefully we'll be getting some good donations and stuff from it uh but you know enough conversation i think about the overall structure i want to touch on the idea here the the inspiration the theme and all that it was actually suggested to me a couple of episodes ago right when we started the south america section actually i think it was recommended to me and i almost immediately fell in love with it i say almost because i did a little bit of research first and the more I read up, the more I was like, oh, yeah, this is this is a solid idea. So, again, thank you all for being so you know involved and, and having such great ideas and stuff in the comments as well that give me leads to look into, to research, and to build upon. So, what are we doing here? Um, well, we still have, of course, the inspiration of the whole Machu Picchu, you know, uh, aesthetic, if you will, the, the steps, the, you know, the... the air quotes, steps on the terrain, uh, the terracing or whatnot. Now, that might actually need to be reduced. We'll touch more on that after the time lapse, actually, but that might actually need to be reduced. Um, but we're still, you know, tying into uh, to, to the whole Machu Picchu aesthetic. 
and uh, everything else that is, I suppose, relevant to that that space. And and in the case of this enclosure in particular, we are drawing inspiration from, uh, I believe, it is Incan uh, mythology. Now, if I get anything wrong here, whether it's pronunciation or it's a, a detail or anything like that, and, and you know better, let me know, please, in the comments down below. I'm never uh, like I appreciate being corrected when I have something wrong, but. What we're doing here is we're actually building a little shrine to Pachamama. And Pachamama is the Incan goddess of, well, quite a few things. She's Mother Earth, first of all. And she sort of has all the responsibilities that come alongside that, such as being the goddess of fertility, of harvest. Um, I believe, if I recall correctly, she also embodies mountains and she is also supposedly responsible for earthquakes. Now, she's particularly tied into the Andes, which is why you saw me looking at the mountains there, or looking at the map there really quickly, to make sure that both of these animals do in fact, you know, touch the mountain range and have some connection to the mountain range, because I wanted to make sure that we were, you know, on point with our references. This long pause over here is me actually looking up visual references for what I'm about to build, which again is a shrine basically to Pachamama. Now, the funny thing actually is, well, there's a couple of funny things. It's funny how it all comes together. First of all, Machu Picchu apparently, and I did not know this until today, Machu Picchu actually does have a shrine to Pachamama. Uh, now, its shrine is a very particular type, which is not the type I'm actually creating here. I don't think I'd be able to build it in-game with the in-game pieces. It's a very unique looking structure. Um, and and if, I, if I'm if i understanding the imagery correctly, then I don't think I'd be able to build it in uh, in Planet Zoo, if I'm completely honest. Uh, so that's one thing. There is that you know very direct connection to the other spaces we're referencing. On top of that, uh, one, of the, <laughs> one of the common sacrifices to Pachamama is, uh, among other things, um, llamas. And uh, it's kind of funny, just earlier we were taking a look at the golden llama sculpture and, and placing it, but uh, but the llamas are right next door, so there's that connection as well. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of reasons to, to kind of like go with this idea. I really like it, and, and hopefully I'm, I'm going about it the right way again. Feel free to correct me. Um, now, here is actually what we're building as the shrine. Now, uh, Pachamama has many representations based on my explorations and my research. There are the modern interpretations of what she might look like, which is a more uh, sort of... Uh, it's a very literal, uh, you know, human figure. Uh, that is an option, and I might actually go with that option as well as what I'm doing here, which again, as per my research, turns out that some of the common symbols and shrines of Pachamama are in the forms of uh, rocks, and uh tree trunks so i was like well that's that's interesting now again there is a sculptural element a very like human figure sculptural element as well and i might pursue that later on when we have more money to build sculptures with uh but for now i was like well this is a really nice and uh uh what, uh, what's the word like it's, it's a it's a really nice reference and it's very uh different from from i think what's expected uh, a human sculpture, a sculpture of a human is a sculpture of a human, but to me this was kind of like a nice detail. So this is what I went with. So yeah, uh, apparently, and based on my, again, reference hunting, there's no, there's very little, like, consistency per se. It is a very natural, um, the, the idea is that it's very sort of driven by nature, I suppose, which is why it's like rock mounds and, 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 and you know, tree uh, trunks and things like that. So based, again, on my research, there was a variety of things. Uh, and, and I tried to uh, to capture that at least, and then also got the little scratching post up there, so it feels like the animals interact with that space a bit more. They're going to be sleeping on either side of the shrine as well. I mean, I I hope you all enjoy it. I hope you all like the uh, the idea there. Again, the suggestion came through, and I was like, oh yeah, let's let's do it. And the full suggestion, in fact, was to make Pachamama's garden. Again, she is, uh, you know, not just Mother Earth, uh, or, or or Mother Nature. Or, uh, I think I think it's officially Mother Earth, but again, I could be mistaken. Uh, but that's not all, right? She's also the goddess of you know harvest and, and growth and fertility and all that. So a garden ties in very nicely with all of those aspects. Uh, so the 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 suggestion was uh, to make Pachamama's garden, and it was it was it's it's on point, it's on brand, and uh, 
And I thought it'd be a fun, fun challenge to again explore something that I'm not super familiar with. I am somewhat familiar with Mesoamerican and South American, um, like history and cultural tradition. Uh, but there are, it, it's not my strongest suit, so it was a great opportunity for me to learn something, uh, very new and explore something very new. Uh, hopefully I've done it justice. Uh, hopefully, again, feel free to correct me if I've got something wrong and we can, you know, touch it up and stuff. But I, but I, I'm very glad to have, uh, this opportunity to explore something like this. And, uh... Very curious to see how the people interact with this space as well. Uh, on which note, you know, all talk of aesthetic and theme and stuff aside, again, I hope you all enjoyed that, but all talk of that aside, time to get back down to sort of the nitty gritty and the final step over here is to establish the um, the actual bounds of our, uh, of our enclosure. So attaching it to the llama enclosure and using plants and stuff to create blockages wherever possible. Again, might actually need to adjust this a little bit. I'll touch more on that later, but we might actually need to get rid of those steps or at least expand the enclosure a touch. Um, but uh, but overall, yeah, feeling feeling pretty good. Putting down some donation boxes and stuff as well. I mean, hopefully, or donation bins, I guess. But hopefully, they'll get some good use. And uh, on the flip side, I actually forgot to mention, on, on the other side, we've got the, uh, the path that'll lead to the Capuchin Monkey enclosure and hopefully a spot uh, for people to, you know, sit down and grab a drink, grab a bite, things like that as well, because we're pretty far from all the uh, vendors down over here. But we'll deal with that when the time comes. For now, folks, this is the time lapse. I hope you enjoyed this time lapse. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, or thoughts, share them down below, but uh, back to regular speed. All right, folks, we are back from that time lapse, and I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with the results. Uh, again, obviously, it is not entirely complete, but we're being price conscious, con conscious, sorry, and we're also trying to, uh, uh, you know, get these animals in and make for the best viewing arrangements as quickly as possible. Uh, make that money and then come back in and uh, and build it all up. But I feel like we've got a really good foundation over here. I'm really excited for the angle we've taken over here it's very different from what i'd originally planned to do uh but i think it does kind of marry into our overall space much more nicely um than i'd originally anticipated we of course have carved out a bit of space over here as well for our upcoming animals and i really do need to think about how i want to integrate the uh exhibit animals i want to get them in sooner rather than later because again they can make a very quick buck for us as we, you know, sell them, uh, especially with like frogs and stuff when they have babies, uh, they have multiple babies and we, and we can sell them for a decent sum. So I might want to do that next. I'm just trying to figure out exactly how I want to map this out. Uh, because again, ideally, ideally everything is a loop. Um, guests like to travel in loops. My hope is that this will kind of work decently where we can send guests down over here. They're able to take a look at the Baird's Tapir and the Ant Eater. They're able to take a look at the Jaguars in this area. Uh, make it a walkthrough. No. <laughs> can you imagine? Um, they can look at the Jaguars over here, up over here. They'll look at the Capuchin Monkeys. The uh, I know I'm repeating myself. The uh, exhibits. And then come back and finish the loop. Like That's the thing. I'm hoping they'll see this as a loop. What I might end up doing is actually add a ride somewhere over here, probably like the gondola or something, because again, we're looking at like, you know, the Andes and things like that. Those are our reference points. So maybe like a gondola ride or something, and that could actually take people all the way up to here. And that way there's a direct connection between the entry point into our Africa region uh, and, you know, an alternative entry point into the South America region. And what we can actually do is that same gondola ride can then continue on down to here where we'll hopefully have... Australia is, I guess, the plan. Um, so overall, pretty satisfied. But again, hopefully the guests will navigate this as I intend them to, because if they don't, we might be in a bit of, wow, well, no, it's not going to be trouble. It's just non-ideal. Again, loops work best, but I like doing things like this. Uh, again, allowing myself to be influenced by Elite Zoo North, where we had our camel enclosure use something like this to make lots of money, so I'm hoping to capitalize on that, but I'm sure I've been over all that during the time lapse, or at least I hope I have. Let's go ahead and take a look at the giant anteater in, um, in the animal market. Go ahead and swap our species out. Go ahead and remove all the filters. G for giant a for anteater. There we go. I can spell, but apparently I can't click. It's funny to me that the game is... Since November, this game has been out, and you still can't click cleanly. 
Low fertility, no thank you. Francisca over here. That seems like a decent and easy purchase. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm thinking we definitely get Francisca. Francisca? Fran Francisca? Not 100% sure. Uh, but de decent genes, actually. Giant anteater, yes, that is the correct animal. Again, conservation credits is ideally what we'll be using. And now we need a male anteater. For now, though, let's go ahead and move you into quarantine. All the way up over here. And while that's happening, we're also going to... And again, let's, I mean, we can keep an eye out for the male. Don't want to spend nearly 2k on... Uh, on an animal. I'll see if another one comes up, a male comes up for conservation credits. Uh, if one does, then uh, then that's great. If one doesn't, maybe we can wait a little bit. You know what I should have done, actually? There's another bad habit that I keep uh, carrying over. If I take a look at my animal storage, and I take a look at my giant anteater, 7.3 years old. I should have checked. 7.3 years old. They live until 16. Okay, so we've got enough time with sexual maturity for that uh, for that anteater. Great, all right, so we'll get to hit play, I think. Once we deliver the animal, we will get more education boards and stuff down because I wanted to wait because I wanted to get the right... I want to duplicate the right education board. Uh, let's go ahead and unpause, and while we wait for the animal to pass quarantine, I do want to get our work zone set up over here. You're fine, South America. There we go. Cool, cool. Hopefully not too long. And then again, this will actually draw guests down over here as well. So we'll need to get some education boards and stuff down here too. And you know what I need to do is I need to get right on the edge there. That actually works out quite nicely. <laughs> that actually works out quite nicely. Because we repositioned that generator a bit last session. So that worked out beautifully. I'm not going to pretend that I'd uh, planned that ahead of time. That was just sheer serendipity. I will take it. And we can actually center this a bit more nicely, too. Hopefully. I don't know if that'll block donations or not. Hopefully it won't. Uh, but yeah, it looks like we can get one over here and one over here. We'll get the speakers loud as well. And what I'd like to do eventually is get a canopy over here so people will have some cover from rain and whatnot. But I just want to do a little bit more research in terms of what would be uh, appropriate, I suppose. Um, you cannot be reached. Oh, I see, because of this. Uh... That's fine. Um, that's fine. We can fix that for sure. Guess I can move you up over there. Yeah, sure. That's the that's the. Uh, what is it? How's it? I, I can never pronounce it right. Occam's razor is it Occam's razor or Occam's razor? Uh, but you know, simple solution is the right solution here. Is what I'm getting at. Why overcomplicate and build a bridge? You can, but it doesn't. It's not necessary at all. Smooth this a little bit if possible. What I need to do maybe is get rid of the water and then go ahead and smooth you just so you look a little bit nicer. There we go. I say there we go, but I don't mean it. There we go. And watch, this has broken everything. Oh. Has it? Now we're good. We got water over here. We got water over here. Is this the right water level? It is in... Deed. Okay, great. I love that the music actually changes when you go underwater. Like, it has that weird muffled feeling to it. I like it. <laughs> it's a nice touch. Subtle, but nice. Quarantine passed. Excellent. Go ahead and get you in over here. And again, and as always, folks, if you have a name suggestion for our beautiful anteater enclosure, it'll be, again, joint... Oh, well, actually, you know what? I have a name suggestion already that I think is what I'll be using just because of our inspiration and whatnot, which I'm sure I've talked about during the uh, time lapse. However, just to keep an open kind of field, if you have a suggestion, leave it in the comments down below. And one might displace my current, um, oh jeez. Didn't realize that was going to happen, did I? Uh, one might displace my current top pick, but, but, um, but I do like my current top pick quite a bit. So just a heads up. I would love to see more suggestions though. So again, Baird's Tapir uh, and... The uh, giant anteater is what's going to be living over here. We're going to get some more uh, stores and stuff here as well. I just want to get this down before I um, forget, as I'm prone to doing. But an emergency capture is just easier. Um, and let's also take a look at a report really quickly. Education facilities. We went from two stars to three stars, so not too bad. 
Uh, but yeah, so if you have a name suggestion for Bears Taper Giant Ant Eater Enclosure, you let me know down below in the comments. I have something in mind already based on a suggestion from a prior episode. Um, but, uh, but, you know, again, I want to throw it out there for suggestions. I do need to get, as I was saying before our llama on the loose, I do need to get some sto stores, like, shops and stuff down over here so just trying to figure out exactly how i want to do that the plan is that again the capuchin have a walkthrough enclosure so i might make a bit of a like a food court-esque area for those monkeys to explore and for our guests to explore at the same time and get food and stuff from i don't know there's there's options we've got a decent bit of space over here we can get a lot of monkeys again for those of you wondering the monkey count can be quite high up to 40 like that's wild right so we, we, we can have a lot of fun with them. Uh, for now, though, hopefully here with the giant ant eater. Let's go ahead and welcome her to our... Or to her humble home, I suppose. Mechanic cannot reach due to work zone setup. Mm, right. Right. You know what? I'm actually tempted to get our mechanic out of any work zones. Because if I'm completely honest, I don't think he needs to be in one just quite yet. Now we should be good. Let's go ahead and before we do anything else, let's check on your, well, a couple of things. For one, habitat. Yes, you're able to reach everything you need to reach. You're also able to reach this, which you're not supposed to be able to reach. Uh, I assume that's because of, yeah, I think we can do that. We should be good. Taking a dip right away. Good stuff. Good stuff. Glad to see they actually have access to the, the water as well. Oh, come on now. Why can't I select you? There we go. Still can escape, eh? That's, uh... Interesting. Let's see what's going on here. What's going on here? Like, the plant does most of the work, but not all of the work. Could move you up over here, maybe? Temporary solution, I suppose. Temporary solution. Check your escape routes now. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Excellent. Cool. So that's good. You're able to get up over here. You're able to get down over here, up to your food and everything. Yeah, all's good. All's good. You are not satisfied with your hard shelter. No surprise there. I do want to build something over here for that. Uh, I don't know if it'll be out of terrain or what, but we need to improve hard shelter. Land area is actually not as much as I would like, so maybe we actually expand this a bit further here. Or we push this lower level back a little bit and just give them a little bit more land to roam in again right there it's not just gonna be the one it'll be a couple of them we need some more short grass as well sounds good and we can have a lot more plants too all right so let's go ahead and actually have you selected and let's go ahead and get oh people are coming through pause real quick because i still have some work to do over here more short grass there we go beautiful i do like the short grass more than the long grass Everything else is fine. We can add a bit more sand, actually. Wouldn't mind that. Just for... Just just a little bit of variety is nice. It just... There we go. Yeah, it just feels a bit more natural. Um, but let's actually... Yeah, let's go ahead and... Use the flattened terrain option if I can find it. There we go. Flattened to foundation. Sorry. And go ahead and... Just smooth this section out a little bit. There we go. There we go. Go ahead and push you back in a little bit. We could actually make this a nice hard shelter area, actually. Have this be the uh, little hiding spot, I suppose. Well, not hiding spot, but the sheltered spot. That would allow us to keep this space clear, which I do like the idea of. Again, it's just... I'm. My, my big struggle has been, um, so far, with uh, finding references for what I want to build, basically. But I, I think here's what we'll do. Here's what we'll do. I think this is what we'll do. Uh, construction. Now, the idea didn't hit me until right now, so I hope you don't mind that this wasn't part of the uh, time lapse. But it won't take me very long, I don't think, at least. I would like to do this kind of a thing for now. Uh, what, what I'm going for is like a, maybe a slight ruins-esque approach that seems kind of appropriate, I suppose, for the space we're in. And the idea I have for the Capuchin Monkeys, uh, enclosure will, I think, marry very nicely with, uh, uh with this concept as well. Go ahead and 
pop you down over here. Yeah, something like that. Uh, you know, I need probably a couple more. Yeah, one more, and yeah, a couple more is exactly what I needed. There we go. Little gaps. I feel like it it brings a bit more life to um to the layout. Put you over there. Go ahead and duplicate. Put the set over here. Again, we're not perfectly aligned, and that's fine. This is uh, not supposed to be. I want it to feel a bit more, you know, haphazard, a bit more like it's been, um, not liking how this is. This is, I don't like the repeating textures at all. And this was pointed out before as well, so I want to be a bit more cognizant of that as well. Unfortunately, both sides, if I'm not mistaken, have, ooh, did they actually change it up for these? Hmm, interesting. Do something like that. Let's do one side for now. Let's just do one side for now. Let's go ahead and move you guys. Move all you guys over a little bit. There we go. And move, rather not move, but duplicate these guys over. Or I can do this, where we rotate you like so. Up you up like this. There we go. Again, I'll probably be rebuilding a fair bit of this stuff, just when I have better references and, and whatnot. Um... If y'all have any suggestions, feel free to provide me some, but, like, I, I'm not looking to build a giant, you know, the, the standard pyramid construct over here. That's not what I want to do uh, for this humble space. That's where the struggle comes in. I, I, I've got plenty of examples of those quote-unquote stereotypical, you know, what we expect of the space, but that's not what I want to do. I don't want to do what we expect of the space. I want to try and come up with some fresh ideas and whatnot. Uh, and hopefully I've, I've managed so far, but again, it's uh, it's been an adventure in seeking out uh, references, as I've mentioned before. Uh, one more thing I need over here is the pillar. There we go. Get Buddy up over here. Right, so we look believable. Space up there to, to tuck in. Yeah, I think so. We can go with this one instead. It's a little bit thinner. That way there's still a better view of the animal too. And so we can do this kind of a thing. And again, the reality of this is like it's probably supported with... Uh, so I, 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 for those of you who have been watching since season one, you'll know my approach or men, my mentality with these things. Uh, but for those of you who have not, or for those of you who have forgotten, this isn't really an ancient uh, you know piece of architecture from the region. This is obviously a construct using modern materials and things like that to replicate the feel of uh, of the space we're uh, we're occupying um, or we're 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 mimicking. Sorry, um, and so you know it, this stuff is obviously being held up by like rebar and stuff. So we aim to make it look natural, but a little bit of uh, leeway is acceptable. I, I try not to take too many liberties, though. Obviously, that's part of the challenge, but. Really, that's pretty good. Now we've got a bit of hard shelter over there. A little bit of that sticking out. Hopefully it doesn't get too wet. We can always nudge everything in a little bit if necessary. We'll see what the uh, the animal has to say, right? This will need some adjusting. Because again, we're still in that phase of... Um, we're still in that phase of low-cost executions for the purpose of financial well-being. Put it that way. By the way, those of you that were uh, talking about the f the frame for the TV over here, uh, it's actually not a TV frame object. It is a editable uh, text sign object. That's what it actually is. Uh, for anybody who's you know looking to maybe replicate the same thing for themselves or whatever it might be, I just want to make sure y'all knew what it was and how you can find the piece. I saw I mentioned the comments a couple episodes ago and forgot to mention it last session, so my apologies for that. Uh, there we go, a little bit larger, and a little bit larger here as well. Why not cover with education? And on the topic of education, actually, one thing I want to touch on, like a bit of a fool or a silly goose to stick with our animal, you know, theme here, uh, I mistakenly, or I misspoke about ecotourism uh, last session, and I was talking about how, how ecotourism is bad. Um, and that's because I had only half of the story in my head. In my head, ecotourism that the game was getting at, in the same vein of you know deforestation and whatnot, it was talking about people visiting uh, sensitive spaces and damaging them. Whereas what the game is getting at is the 
ecotourism, uh, ecotourism done well, or ecotourism itself is tourism of these fragile spaces, except done with um, being cognizant of the needs and limitations when you're visiting a space like that. Uh, so ecotourism is a good thing. My apologies. Uh, in my head, I had it. What I was thinking was when people visit spaces that are fragile, it is bad. The second half of that is that is why ecotourism exists to make sure when people do visit those spaces, precautions are taken. Um, so I wanted to, uh, again, thank you for pointing out that I misspoke. I hate misinformation. So anytime I say something that's inaccurate and one of y'all pointed out, if I, if I learn it myself, then I'll, I'll correct myself on video. I want to, you know, clear, clarify the information. And if someone points out in the comments, then I will clarify that as well. So, uh, thank you again for, for pointing out that I misspoke, <laughs> mis, misthought and misrepresented a very important thing last session. Uh, now. Back to this session. Folks have already come over here, which is great to see. You are pretty happy. Art shelter is not perfect. I mean, but again, we can replicate this construct onto this other side and and have that 50% literally go right up to 100%, more or less. It's funny. I've gone from one end of the spectrum to the other. Most of my enclosures are way too large. Now, this one, I feel like I'm crammed for space. Um, <laughs> and in some ways, I, I kind of am. It's okay, we can expand a little bit further over here. We've got room, and again, we can even push this further back. This curve doesn't have to be a curve. It can be widened as well. We've got room to play, so I'm not too worried about that. Those are adjustments we can make whenever. These guests have come through. Hopefully, they're having a good time. They are feeling hungry and stuff, so that's a bit of a problem. Um, but I'm going to need an education board up over there. I can put it over here to like flank it. Take advantage of that same generator, right? We don't have to build another one. You both in here, please. There we go. Four objects is what I need. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of audio overlap. Hmm. Well, I mean, I guess I could just reduce the volume. Oh, the TV didn't come through. Great. Of course it didn't. Come on now. Where are you? Where are you? Bring you. Over. There we go. Put that around, and hopefully, I mean, we didn't see any donations from those guests, which is unfortunate, but hopefully, most guests that are coming through will donate. Yeah, good stuff. We're getting movement already. And you know what? I what I should do is I should immediately check, even though I put the corrective measures down. I should check. There we go. Good stuff. And guests are coming through. Are you excited to be here? Going home. Mm. Alright, you know what we need to do is... Hey, look! That's so dope! Oh, that's amazing! Hey! That's, that's, that's... That makes me so happy. It was, uh, I saw it mentioned in the comments, like, Yeah, I haven't seen that bench used. Are you sure it's working? And turns out it is. Our little stone bench construct does, in fact, work. That feels good. That feels real good. Now, what I wanted to do was I wanted to put a bench down right over here in the middle. I wanted to put a bench down. I'll probably put a couple of benches down over here, actually, if I'm completely honest. Come on now, game. I hate the way seating and stuff works. And how it snaps. Do this kind of a thing. One. Come on, the shortcut key wasn't working for some reason. One here. And one here. Probably get the stone on there now as well. And claim that from the habitat species. Going up to 850 guests next. We're at about 500, roundabout. Gotta get the. Things separately here. Come on now. There we go. I forgot it was two of them. My bad. Duplicate okay, you. Flip you around. So happy this works. It just uh, looks so much more thought out, I feel. And now that we know we can do it, like each region can have its own kind of treatment, which is the bigger deal, I would say. That's the bigger deal. Did you ever so slightly? 
Pop you down like so. And just one more. It's a marginal cost. A marginal cost. Or the impact. I'll, I'll probably go in and straighten these and I'll... In the future-ish. People are coming through, you're looking at the animal, you're thinking it's amazing, you're planning on dropping a uh, donation, hopefully. Yeah, people are starting to get hungry and thirsty and stuff down over here, so I'll definitely need to expand that. Definitely need to expand that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the ant eater options if there is another... Ah, come on, man, I need... You know what I need, game. Don't do this. Don't, 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 don't do me like this. Don't do me like this. Having a good time, buddy? Having a little swim? Well taken care of, I hope. Yeah, we'll almost definitely have to adjust the train, especially if we want to make this a joint enclosure. We'll have to expand it a little bit. Not a problem, not too bad. Not too bad. Easy enough to do. Go ahead and take all these guys. We'll get you over. This works for now, I would say. Move you guys down over here again. Trying not to buy new pieces if I don't have to. Trying to stay cost conscious. Conscious. I keep adding that extra N in there. <laughs> there we go. And get you back over here, buddy. There we go. What are you saying? Where are you at? My lovely. There you are. And you think the heart shelter is perfect. Literally just had to double it. <laughs> they are really cute animals. They're very interesting animals, I would say. Like, those really long claws that they use to, like, dig up. If I'm not mistaken, it's what's used to, like, dig up the ants and stuff. And they also have a very interesting, um... Uh, food enrichment, which is just an... It's an it's an anthill. What I actually need to do is get a vet, vet researching the anteater. Get that done, right? The other vet can go around making little visits. Are you scratching your... Okay, that sequence of events is just priceless. Comes on over. Takes a little thump. Scratches a little butt. These guys are coming through here as well, right? That, that's This is the thing. This is the thing. Is like Now we have to manage educational expectations on both sides of that walkway. Which is the challenge which I've invited onto myself. Put this down over here, I think is a reasonable spot for it. Alright, we got this donation bin over here already, so that's fine. If people are interested, they'll, they'll, they'll donate. Let's go ahead and reduce your volume ever so slightly. What I would like to do is... Duplicate you to this side as well. Offset you a little bit and make you about llamas. Make you about llamas. And make you. Come on now. Make you about llamas too. No. And I'll probably need to replicate more of those. We'll see. I mean, we we we, we don't have any animals here just yet. This is where we might put the stores and stuff down. That way guests are able to come through. Mm, I've seen bigger and better zoos. Listen you. I mean, this area is starting to see some work. I like the view of the giant ant eater. Yeah, this should be a good spot for views. Uh, and once we get a second one, and once we start getting like babies and stuff, we should be seeing some money too. No donations yet, which is just what? Are you not satisfied? Happy, healthy, giant anteater. So you were happy. Not happy enough to... Okay, let's see. What's the deal here? I think they still have money, but in case they don't, let's go ahead and get some ATMs, shall we? Go ahead and get some ATMs. One... Down over there. Mirror that trash. Can, and let's put one down over... Year, for when they go into like the food court area and stuff like that. Hopefully we start seeing... Oh, was that guy sitting over here? I think he was. Ah, oh, we're seeing a pretty good crowd. So, that's good, at least. Hopefully this wasn't the wrong call. We have a mail for 1500 Not, not, Not what I'm looking for right now. 
Lots of these uh, llamas maturing as well, which is okay. Interesting. Bigger crowds over here now as well, it seems. These guys are still raking in the cash. It is December. Come on now. This this is a decent crowd. This is a decent crowd. Buddy over here just chilling. Look at that. What a model. Oh, taking a nap. Oh, such a great, like, nap shape. With the tail over its back and stuff. It's curled into a little ball. That's cute. Look at that crowd. I and mean, we've got a decent crowd over here. The animal's not stressed out or anything. There's a fair distance. Um, and again, the reason why we didn't make this a walkthrough enclosure is because we wanted um, the Baird's Tapir as well. And obviously, you cannot share a space with the Baird's Tapir. This is great. They're actually using these benches. Super happy about that. This should replenish their energy. That man, this woman, they both just stood up. Yep, yeah, 100%. But they're still going home. Going to need refreshment soon. It's so hot. Fair enough, fair enough. Let's actually get... A little bit of cooling here as well until we're able to make the shades and the covers and whatnot let's go ahead and get a cooler over here that should do the trick that should do the trick and i know i can hide them below the path but for now i'm keeping them exposed so i can uh remember where they are so if i need to make any adjustments and stuff i think to exhibit two you're happy yeah, no one is dropping donations here not a single one and that is, let me tell you, not good. And defeats the purpose. The decent appeal, 3150, is like the same as our crocs. Like our baby croc is about 3200 or so, isn't it? Let's well, see, so you're an adult. 2600. But I guess it's bronze versus gold and all that. Yeah, there's so many layers to it. Find the crowd, though. People are happy with what they're seeing. So cute seeing you run like that. Folks over here. I don't know. We'll uh, we'll see. I was I was hoping for better and more immediate results. I suppose. We still made a profit last year. This year, so far, so good. We'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. But folks, this, as I try to capture the tongue sticking out over here, it's a very horrible. That's what an anteater's tongue looks like. I want to try and show you the length of that tongue, though. I don't know if it's still going to eat. There you go. Boom. Can't believe I paused right on time. That's, uh, that's what an anteater tongue looks like. Just wanted to get that. As the last note upon which we're going to call it a session. We've crossed that 500 guest mark, so that's pretty good. I mean, overall happiness is still kind of low. I think it's been affected, of course, by the fact that we've expanded here without any, like, food stalls and stuff. Uh, that's, I think, the next step. I think next session we're going to get some food stalls and stuff over here. It'll cost us a fair bit, but that should help bring some more cash flow as well. Maybe we'll finally get another uh, anteater, too. We'll adjust the terrain over here so that we can get the Baird's Tapir as well, because... Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to need more room. We're going to need more room. It's it's funny how it's it's one of two extremes for me. Either the the space is way too big or... Well, okay, it's not way too small. Not for one animal, at least. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this session again. Slow and steady wins the race, as they say, so hopefully we are headed for winnings. Big winnings. I'm pretty happy with the baseline situation over here as well like the overall look of things and how the south america section is evolving lots of bigger more you know forested areas or jungled areas to come and stuff as well so lots of interesting plans over there but i think today's session uh has at least brought us a step closer to uh a hopefully improved finances we'll see if those those donations don't start coming soon coming through soon i'm gonna be a nervous man it's very possible that... Nah, it doesn't make any sense. I was going to say, it's very possible these guests that are coming through were not interested, so that's why they're not dropping um, money, but that just doesn't make sense because they've come here. I don't know, folks. If you have any thoughts, let me know. If you have any opinions, let me know. As always, if you enjoyed this session, leave a like and a comment down below. It makes a massive difference in how I approach content on the channel and what I do more or less of. And if you didn't enjoy the session, let me know as well. Leave a comment. Give me some feedback. Always welcome. 
As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.